So the first thing we need to do is mark our fabric to place our buttonhole. So I'm gonna take my tab, I'm gonna put my button right where I want it to be on the finished tab, the finished bag, and I'm gonna take a disappearing fabric marker and just put a line right at the bottom to mark where the bottom of the buttonhole is gonna go. Then I'm gonna take a straight edge and I'm gonna draw a line straight up from that. So I'm kind of making a capital T, like an upside down capital T. So this is gonna be the bottom of the buttonhole, so we'll start there and go up from there. Alrighty, my fabric is ready, now I need to get my machine ready. The first thing I'm gonna do is select my stitch. So the Classic 44S has a one-step buttonhole, which is awesome. That means the machine's gonna do the whole buttonhole for you, and if you're doing multiple buttonholes, they'll all look exactly the same, so it'll look really professional. So I'm gonna choose my buttonhole stitch, which is this icon right here. For the length, I want it to be somewhere between zero and one, and you can see there's a buttonhole icon on the length dial to help you remember that. You can start in the middle somewhere and test it out and see how it looks first. Whenever you're doing a buttonhole, by the way, you always, always want to test it first on the actual fabric you'll be sewing on just to make sure all the settings are right. For the width, we'll go on a width of six, and for the needle position, we can just have that right in the center. So all of my stitching, my stitch controls, and my stitch selector dial are all set, so now we're going to put on the buttonhole foot. So this is my buttonhole foot for this machine. And back here is a place for us to put the actual button that the buttonhole will be for to make sure that it's exactly the right size. So I'm going to take my button and put it right in this area. It slides around and once you get it in you can just slide it and snug it up. So you can use um, you know, a smaller button than this, you would snug it up more and it slides around and adjusts to the size of your button. So I'm going to look for the pin, which is the silver bar right here. Um, so this is where we're going to attach our foot. So I'll push my presser foot release lever to drop off my regular presser foot. And then I'm going to put my buttonhole foot under the presser foot holder. And I want the part with the button to be behind the needle. I'm going to put the presser foot pin right under the presser foot holder, like that. Get it centered and just very gently lower the presser foot lifter until it snaps into place. You might have to move the foot around a little until you find the spot where it snaps on. Alrighty, I'm going to also pull down my buttonhole lever, which is this piece right here, and you want to be super duper sure that you pull it all the way down. It kind of snaps down at the end. To get set up for a buttonhole, I'm going to push this back, right where it says push, and now my machine knows that it's starting a new buttonhole. I'll take my fabric and place it under the foot. You want to line up the bottom of that T, the horizontal line in the upside down capital T, with the little window in the presser foot. And there are actually some grooves on the side of the presser foot, so that should all be lined up. The grooves, the window, and the horizontal line. And you want the middle of the line, that vertical line, to be centered in the window as well. And you can even crank the needle down towards the fabric a little bit just to be really sure that you're lined up. So once you're lined up, you're ready to go, you're just going to push the pedal down and kind of very gently guide the fabric, but the machine is going to make a whole buttonhole. So here we go. When you get to the end, you want to let it sew about 10 or so times in place, maybe 8 to 10 times, and then you'll stop with the pedal because when it gets to the end, it'll just keep sewing in place. We will finish the stitch we're on with our hand wheel by cranking it until the take-up lever comes back up. I'll lift my presser foot and pull out my buttonhole. So here is my finished buttonhole. At this point, I would just take a hand sewing needle, thread the upper threads through, and bring them to the back of the fabric and tie a knot and cut the tails off. So the last thing I need to do is open up my buttonhole so I can put a button through it. I'm gonna take some pins and I'm going to put them through at the top and bottom of the buttonhole because I'm about to cut the fabric and I don't want to accidentally slice through my stitching. I'm gonna take the seam ripper that came with the machine and I'm going to put the seam ripper through the fabric right in the center, so all the way through. And you wanna be right between your lines of stitching and then carefully slice through everything till you get to the top, to that pin right there. And then we'll turn it around and slice to the other side, just like that. 
All right, so we'll take our pins out and there is your buttonhole all finished. If you're doing multiple buttonholes, when you get set up for your next one, you wanna make sure that you push the buttonhole lever again and then you'll be all ready to sew another buttonhole.